Today I'll be giving a demonstration on how to paint a house ornament. I'll be painting this particular image, but I think a lot of the tips can translate over to whatever house you're painting. Um, I'll be using acrylic paint and on a smooth surface foam sphere. I've been painting these ornaments for close to six months now and created quite a few. I had a little bit of a learning curve when I first started and I think that if this video would have been helpful to save me a lot of trouble in how to go about painting it. So hopefully this video is useful for you and yeah. Before we get into it, please don't forget to subscribe if you think you may enjoy my content. I create artist lifestyle and related videos so yeah I'd love to have you join along on the journey. All right, let's begin. So first off, get your station all situated with your paints, um, water, and, and the such. I like to use a lot of flat brushes and then the detail brushes, obviously, as well as a big brush for the primary areas. The painting. Um, these foam spheres come pretty roughened, uh, you'll notice. So I like to use a fine grained sanding. And when I, for putting the paintbrush in, I could do a, a crisscross with the scissors, like a little X, and then I could put the paintbrush in pretty easily. Kind of um, smooth it out with some white paint, and that will kind of fill in some more of the imperfections. And then I, I like to do a nice layer of paint all over for like the, with the sky blue color. This is a nice trick that I use for getting a nice straight line for the horizon and where the paint, where the house is going to be. So um, I like to use the cup trick, and then you'll find um, it's pretty useful for keeping it straight. Because if you start painting without doing this, you may make the whole house crooked. So uh, make sure this line is nice and straight, and that'll help you a lot. I like to start with the clouds using um, any brushes that you feel like. Clouds are so fun. All right, now we're going to use the primary color of the house. So I'm just going to mix up that um, mid-tone color. So I like to, you know, do do one that's not too dark, not too light, but mostly color, mostly mostly resembles the color of the house. So you'll notice I'm taking my time on trying to get this color correct. And then we're going to observe the primary shape of the house, uh, and we're going to fill it in like a block of color, essentially. I'm using my little flat brush. I like to use the edges of this, the thin direction, and getting those clean edges. You'll notice I hold my paintbrush kind of at an angle to kind of chisel away at those edges. And you'll notice I do this trick where I make the um, outer right and left edges of the house slightly angled, uh, flared outward and then it gives more of the illusion of having the house straight. Before I did this, I actually did the line actually straight. The house looked more warped than it was, so I found that that trick kind of evens it out. So give that a shot. Then we're gonna go on to the roof and getting these angles, I kind of do like little uh, connect the dots. So if I do that, it's easier to get those angles um, symmetrical on both sides using my detail brush. And then we're gonna move on to some of the larger details. Um, so we're gonna do the front porch awning and the little, um, the little roof, I don't know what these are called, honestly. And I'm focusing on the outer edges. You notice the inner edges, the lower edges aren't super clean, but when I come in in the next color, I'll be able to clean that up really nicely. And we're doing the pillars. Same thing, I do focus on the one edge at a time. You'll find that it's pretty impossible to do both edges super clean at the same time. And then we're gonna jump right into the windows. Um, I don't focus on the glass of the window just yet. We're kind of doing the frame of the window by making the whole window white. And then um, that'll be more possible to keep those clean edges. Really doing the same trick um, really can help along the whole way. I'm focusing on outer edges and then the inner edges get sloppy but then they get filled in and you can do it. it just, yeah. 
that's the biggest thing that I found with these houses that's really helped is yeah, making those edges. And then always you can always start um, further away and then make the line go out more. So whenever you get nervous, just do the line underestimating where it's going to be, if that makes sense. Be sure to get those shadows in from the roof and that'll keep, that'll make it have more of a realism look. Gosh, this paint dries so quick. I don't know um, how you guys like acrylics, but they're a love-hate relationship for me. All right, so we're really just doing a lot of the details, um, using the tiniest brush for the details in the window. I like to add a little bit of blue um, in the glass of the window because that'll kind of make it um, reflect from reflecting the sky and it looks less gloomy. Like you'll notice in photographs, a lot of times the windows are just black, but uh, when you want to make a happy looking home, it's nice to have some light and life in there, so I'll do that. Okay, and then just carrying on with these um, details. Moving along quite well, huh? And just like that, the house is done, so we're going to move on to the greenery. I like to mix my green with some black and some white, and that'll kind of um, give it a little bit, oh, and also some yellow. That'll give it a little bit more of a natural tone rather than just bright green, unless you like that bright green look, that's totally fine. No judgment. Um, I like to have fun with the bottoms of the ornament, so sometimes I do like a little swirly, sometimes I make it a sort of an ombre, like, like a cloud look. Um, I have to... Yeah, so, but this one I just did the swirl and I added some other colors as well, not just the green, to add some interest. And then we are going to um, put some mountains in. Mountains are so fun, I like to use, again, a little flat brush and hold it the, mostly the thin direction, chisel, chiseling away at the top edge of the mountain ridges. And um, I like to use multiple colors because not just the solid gray, but if I also have some other colors in there, that's going to add some more dimension and create those natural shadows and highlights that you'd see in nature. Um, and then I'm going to go in with more intentional shadows and highlights um, and also maybe some snowy tops. Mountains are so fun because there's not really um, uh, not really a lot of ways to go wrong with it. Unless you're doing like pyramid shape, <laughs> then maybe that might look a little fake. And now we're going to do the trees. Um, so with this one, the trick I would have is a little flat brush again. Um, always paying attention to the bristles, making sure the bristles are together because if they're flared, that's going to make not a very crisp straight line. That's going to be a fluffy line and we don't like that. So, um, and then with the outer um, branches using the tiny detail brush. Um, I know the, the picture didn't have leaves on in the tree, but for this one I'm going to make it a fall theme. I am going to add those leaves, and I use a brush that I don't mind uh, the bristles flaring, um, and then I just um, do like bristles directly on the surface, and that'll kind of create natural texture of leaves. And when the leaves, when the tree is so far away like this one, it's going to look pretty natural. So I'm adding a couple different colors. I love fall time, so pretty happy with how that's looking. And just kind of going back in, doing random miscellaneous touch-ups as I find fit. And the calligraphy is going to be a little bit of a tricky part. I'm definitely not the best at this, um, but I'm going to do the same lining up technique similar to how I did in the beginning except without putting an actual line on. I'm just going to place the ornament there and um, kind of give me a little bit of a line to follow. It's sometimes when I do this writing it ends up being crooked, kind of like how I mentioned the house might be if you um, don't put that initial line on it. So I just give it a shot and um, try to make it perfectly um, across on the back side of the ornament. Um, I've also had times where it's not straight on the back, but just give yourself grace. It'll it'll um, take some time, but it's okay if it's not perfect because that's what makes art so special sometimes. It's those little happy imperfections. Just adding the last little tree here. And yeah, I'm going to let that dry 
it dries really quick here in Utah, but make sure it's all dry for the next step, which is um, top, top coat. Um, I, I would call it varnishing, but this isn't really varnished. So Mod Podge, I know it seems tacky, but it's actually an excellent top coat. I like how it finishes off really smooth. You'll find that, um, yeah, it doesn't, it looks clumpy at first when you put it on, but it's gonna dry so smoothly, unless you do it like super clumpy. Um, and then I use sparkles, and I just like put those sparkles on um, after the Mod Podge. One time I did it before, and it like the sparkles just like became texture and their shine wasn't there. So I'm gonna get this um, brush out, and this last part is a little bit interesting because this um, the glue sort of melts the interior of the ornament if you put it in all at once. I found, and also sometimes it can create a bubble. So I like to do it in increments. That's the key. Um, so I pr first put the initial bit of glue in, and then I center the hook. Um, and make sure it's nice and straight and just try to visualize how it's going to hang. Um, it, it, it's kind of one of those things I get bugged if it's not hanging right, but just, um, you can kind of, it has some give for a while. It does get burning hot if you, um, you know, the metal heats up from the hot glue. But yeah, do it in increments and fill it in slowly and then hopefully there'll be a nice finishing result and without a bubble, sometimes a bubble it comes up, but... Yeah, and then I'm just going to paint it um, to match and sometimes I also top it off with uh, Mod Podge as well to really give it that disguise. I love these little hooks. I got them from Hobby Lobby and I just love the look of little curly cur cur cues. I can't talk, sorry. And yeah, um, tie it off with a bow, with a sparkly bow. Alright guys, that's it for today. Um, thank you so much for watching and I hope some of these tips helped in your painting journey. So. Please let me know if they did in the comments below and I look forward to going along in this art journey together. Thank you so much. Bye!